Hi there everyone, it's been a little while since we did one of our lucky dips into the Royal Society card catalogue here. White Gloves of Destiny at the ready. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to cheat a little bit though, because I'm learning that it's over the left hand side here where all the good stuff is, so I'm going to... Let's go, let's go here. My eyes are closed. Everything's random. Let's go here. John Davy. Notice of the remains of the recent volcano in the Mediterranean. Phil Trans. Keith's going to come in with the call slip. Okay, These let's are the get slips. that done. These are the slips that are filled out by all the people here in the library whenever a request is made. I don't imagine many people come here and choose their documents the way I just did, Keith. Uh, no, you're, you are the only random researcher we have. Okay, let me do a provisional. This is my backup in case we decide to have a look at a second one. Try a different draw. Different draw? All right. Where do you reckon, Keith? You tell me when to stop. Stop. Here we go. On the protrusion of protoplasmic filaments from the glandular hairs on the leaves of the common teasel by Francis Darwin. Any Big name, yeah. relation. Son of Charles Darwin. So, by choosing Francis Darwin and John Davy, I've managed to choose two relatives of slightly more famous scientists in Charles Darwin and Humphrey Davy. So both documents are here in the same aisle, that's helpful. There we go. PT21. So this is from uh, 1833. Let me let me remove my glove. That's just going to make life difficult. I still think they were a good idea though. <laughs> Even though I take them off every time. Six. Six. Here we go. As it said on the slip, notice of the remains of an ancient volcano in the Mediterranean by John Davy. MD. MD. FRS, of course. Mm -hmm. So John Davy's a physician. He's the brother of Humphrey Davy, as I think you said. Quite famous in his own right. And what he's interested in, particularly, is, is the sorts of fevers you get in the Mediterranean, especially in army hospitals. So he's interested in Malta fever and things like that, and that's why he's out there. But quite clearly, he's he's noticed something else that he thought the Royal Society would be interested in, yeah. and he's written a paper about it. So he's out there doing his doctoring, but he's still open to the old uh, yeah. bit of volcano action. In consequence of an examination made by Captain Swinburne, RN, of the so shoal. Yep, formed by the subsidence of volcanic island which was thrown up. So a shoal has formed in the Mediterranean as a result mm. of this volcano and he's riding back to London saying this is this is interesting. Yep, this is something you should know about. So he's describing this new structure we presume. Let's have a look further. Oh look he's talking here about dark coloured porous lava. So the Yeah, sort of so he's describing the kind of material that's in place. It's his intention to return into port on the 22nd of August, be plied with two specimens which he had procured. So he, he's collected some specimens of this rock. He's going to bring some of it back to London. No pictures though. I think there is a picture of this. Uh, I've seen one. I think it's been separated from the main paper and I think it's in this PT 73-74 sequence. So uh, I think we should maybe just have a little look for that just to see if we can locate that. The stuff he stores in there, hey? Yeah, Imagine I know. if it is in there. Who needs a card catalogue when you've got Keith? I know, I know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's, let's just pop that back for All a moment. Right. So here's the one Keith remembered. It looks like it might be a different volcanic island, actually. We're not sure. Well, that's right. I mean, this is dated 1832, so this is the year before. But of course, it takes a little while for things to get published. Urton is the Royal Navy captain whose name is on it. And one can see just a, a Navy ship here. But it's quite clearly a volcano. So I'm intrigued to know if it's the same one or something different. This looks like a, an Arabian ship here. The white gloves yeah. have certainly led us into some interesting territory here, Keith. Yeah, and, and quite a nice image. Now we've got to do your second paper. All right, let's see how we go with our provisional. AP 59. Archive papers 59, so we're a little Over further this way. along here. What's Francis Darwin got to say? Well, Francis Darwin has quite legible handwriting. He's writing about the leaves of the common teasel. Do you know what a teasel is? Yeah, it's not unlike a thistle. Have you seen those flowers with kind of quite spiky heads? Yeah. Teasels were, I think, sometimes used in uh, cloth making. Okay. 
cup-like receptacles surrounding the stem of the plant, accumulating numerous insects. Now, of course, if you're wondering why is Francis Darwin writing about insectivorous plants, mm -hmm. there's your answer. His father, Charles Darwin, wrote quite a famous book about them. And actually, through this paper, he does refer back to this book. So that's right. he's continuing the research of his father, basically. Yeah, so that's just two years before this. And you can see the first footnote in this paper refers to his dad's book. Is it a long paper? Oh, oh dear. So he's written quite a lot about the teasel. More about a teasel than I thought one could write. A fascinating plant. And we see things like here, we see little corrections and little inserts. So we're really feeling that, you know, this mm. is the writing in process here. I love it. I love it. He went to town, Keith. There's even footnotes. Look. To other papers on the teasel. This page has got this little bit of writing and then this massive footnote. Look at that. 62 pages of teasel passion. There we go, Keith. There's Francis Darwin and teasels hot on the heels of John Davy and his volcano. What do you think? Mm -hmm. How have the white gloves done today? Not bad. That, that's, uh, that's quite a nice pairing, I think. I, I'm pretty happy with it. I think the white gloves serve me better than our special guests. Yeah, the special guests on the whole haven't been that great, but yeah, that's a good one. The white gloves know only one master. Uh-huh, mm. yep. Here's Charles Darwin in South America on his most famous voyage, and he's discovering fossils. And this helps him to think about uh, extinction because these huge things are no longer around. What happened to them? And therefore, eventually, it feeds into his ideas about evolution, which is the most important piece of work of the 19th century and just about any period you can think of in science.